everyone. Great to see you all here. And my name is Natalia Dombrovska, and I am competence uh, expert of Quality Management Office and the moderator of the talk. Uh, we are opening Quality Management Week with the first topic about um, an uh, I say essential project for Ukraine and uh, how the IT sphere and tax solutions are helping volunteering organizations, a quality which leads us to freedom. Uh, before we start uh, the conversation, I would want to announce the uh, ground rules. For employees in Ukraine, please take care of yourself and follow to the shelter in case of air alarm. Stay muted and be aware of background noise. Uh, be responsible for your full participation during the session. Uh, please write down uh, your full name in Zoom using uh, Zoom functionality. Be active. We are going to have uh, time for Q&A in the end of the session. Meanwhile, you are uh, welcome to put comments into the chat. A link to the recording of event you will get uh, in follow-up email uh, after the session. Let me introduce our speaker, Irina Grigorchuk, uh, quality control lead at SoftServe and uh, has a story about creation solution for well-known uh, foundation, uh, Come Back Alive. Uh, hi, Ira. I'm happy to see you here and short remark for our audience. I was pleasantly surprised when I found out uh, whom uh, the speaker would be for the topic I was asked to moderate. I was the first era's uh, test lead many years ago uh, when she started her journey as a quality control engineer trainee. And now uh, she's leading a uh, non-typical project actually and sharing a unique experience and i'm really really happy ira could you please share any interesting fact about uh, yourself with our audience and i just curious what new i will learn about you hello everyone uh, my name is irina Grigorchuk. i'm qc lead at subserve and for the last five months i contribute to come back alive foundation providing competent assistance to the military and yes, Natalia is the one who reviewed my first bug report. Um, interesting facts about me. Uh, well, when I was a teenager, I traveled uh, all over Europe. Okay. And um, my passion is psychology. Huh. I, I know about psychology, but not about uh, attractive uh, teenagers time. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let's move to our topic and talk a little bit about uh, OpenTech, SoftServe uh, charity crowdsourcing platform, uh, the one of the aim of which is um, changing the world throughout technology. Ira, please take the floor. Um, well, cooperation with Comeback Alive Foundation became possible thanks to OpenTech. It's a really nice opportunity for subservients to volunteer with their technical skills and knowledge to gain professional experience. It brings people together, it promotes personal growth and self-esteem. We have some statistical data for the last three years. It's more than 400 volunteers and 50 projects. Those are projects for state departments like Ministry of Education and Science Ukraine, Ministry of Digital Transformation of Ukraine, although uh, for UNICEF Ukraine and different charity foundations. 24 projects are already finished. Oh, wow, uh, numbers uh, show that people enjoy being part of uh, world changing things. I know um, that Open Tech started a discussion about cooperation with Comeback Alive uh, before uh, the full scale invasion. Uh, how is cooperation going now? Uh, what are you doing for Comeback Alive? And could you please explain for our non Ukrainian audience uh, about Comeback Alive what, uh, and why it is so important uh, for us? Well, Open Tech and Comeback Alive considered different options for cooperation and discussed potential development of the site. After February 24, the issue was the website became more acute because there was a peak of donations and the donation system needed urgent upgrade. 
these, this foundation works was uh, since 2014 and has raised uh, four and a half billion of hryvnias for the needs of armed forces of Ukraine and trained over 10,000 highly qualified military specialists. Uh, actually, Come Back Alive is the first charity organization in Ukraine that received a license for purchase and import of military goods. The team purchased and transferred the complex of the Bayraktar. Um, although the foundation has transparent financial statements, if, uh, every donation and purchase can be tracked in real time. Uh, so, what business challenges we had after cooperation started? The fund had two sites on two different domains, the international version and the page for Ukrainians. So the following business needs and goals were set. First, uh, merge two websites into one with clear division of news feed and information about fund itself. So the site is in Ukrainian and localized in English. Second, urgent need for a convenient donation system with the possibility to donate both one time and with monthly subscription. Uh, I would like to show you the result received after redesign. Merged website with newsfeed and donation form, although uh, a statistic about how donations increased. Uh, impressive results, uh, actually, and uh, increasing donation uh, shows uh, that uh, the right and qualitative uh, solution uh, matters. Are you implementing only one project or working with other initiatives for Come Back Alive? Uh, yes, now we launch new projects to gather more donations. Uh, Taras Chmut, a head of Comeback Alive Foundation, had birthday months ago. On the occasion of that, we launched the possibility to donate money for military purposes and to write him happy birthday wishes. Uh, we gathered over 2 million hryvnias, and it was a really nice initiative. Uh, next one, Students Against Rusnia. 15 uh, university communities have competition who will gather more money for Corsar missile system. Although the Comeback Alive Fund, together with gas station chain OCO, launched the project OCO the OCO. It will be added soon on our side. The goal is to collect money for shark complexes that are manufactured by Ukrainian Ukur spec system. Um, my favorite is the last one, uh, A for an I, and for our non-Ukrainian speaking audience, uh, I, I like the play on uh, words OKO and OKO in Ukraine, yeah? uh, the name of the gas station and uh, the Ukrainian word OKO, uh, word OKO which was shortened uh, ka sound, which means I, and you could translate it, it uh, similar to a tooth for a tooth, for example. You buy a petrol and donate to the Ukrainian armed forces. Uh, a lot of uh, great ideas uh, how to crowdfund, but let's uh, uh, talk about implementation and uh, what challenges are you facing? Uh, what is the main things you would like to share about the core project? Well, I can say that the team is the first and most important value in this project. There was a frequent job rotation on the project after the full-scale invasion because the situation was unstable in different areas of our lives. So we had started building our team based mostly on people's will to commit and take responsibility, regardless of whether a person has a main commercial project or is currently free and waiting for the next one. We expect some level of commitment. Uh, we organized something like a motivational conversation with everyone who joins, it looks like an interview. It's about their and our expectations. Um, of course, uh, circumstances can change or the associate can refuse at any moment. But what is important is one's own desire to join and help. If you have it, uh, we welcome new person to the team. It was successful experiment and worked even better than we expected. Um, although it's very important to have a ramp up plan, to ease the onboarding process because like level of involvement is different, different load and availability of teammates. Uh, I try to delegate to the teammates onboarding of newbies. 
So they will have more experience with assistance and supporting team members. Um, staffing the volunteer project uh, gave us next insights. We are used to build project teams based on uh, business requirements, budgets, and approval from the client. And this approach sits deep inside our heads. But for volunteer project, we can add people to the team when there is a need based on planning uh, and teammates load on the main commercial projects. For instance, if we need three associates, let us say one QC lead and two middle QCs, we add it twice as much and not guided by estimates at all. We even have another QC lead, so I can share my responsibilities when I'm unavailable due to vacation, sickness, or workload. For me, uh, it's interesting experience and good opportunity to improve team composition skills. And we're suggesting such an approach, although for the other sub-teams, especially developers. So we try to eliminate cases when only one de developer works with certain specific functionality. And we are dependent on uh, his schedule and workload. What has changed? We have one more business analyst and few new developers were added to the team. Uh, second point, a nice one, a volunteer project is a wonderful opportunity to create and uh, work in a dream team. You offer to join people with whom you worked on previous projects and you had a good operation, trust and results. This gives you the opportunity to turn this project into an extremely exciting place for you to achieve your goals, share experience, have fun, etc. Uh, I like your phrase that people are the most important and the war additionally illuminated this uh, uh, for us and you have the freedom to choose. However, I am just human after all. Uh, frequently a changing team structure is uh, a challenging not only from test logistic perspective but uh, also from the people management side. Did you have any conflicts uh, in your team so far? Hmm. Well, probably no. Uh, you know, we are always open to discussing ideas, changes, but yeah, we have challenges. For example, postponed releases, sometimes late night releases, stressful situations, but participation is voluntary and teammates can terminate cooperation if something does not suit them. Um, what else I want to add here? Sometimes there are situations in commercial projects when clients lose millions due to the box and it's not easy to handle. But when you're on project like Comeback Alive, even one hryvnia that didn't get into account due to box is perceived as simply unbearable and the most awful thing. And I think th this is what drives the team because as soon as there is some complex issue, a blocker, Someone always voices our main goal. Every hrivnia must go to the foundation's account. And we will do everything possible to keep it that way. And here they are, our current QC team. We have now senior, middle, and junior uh, quality control engineers. Um, actually, uh, Valeria Zabava is another QC lead, and it was her idea to name the story quality that leads us to freedom. Uh, thank you, and uh, team, for opportunity to convert fury into donation without uh, causing additional angry that something doesn't work. Uh, what about development life cycle? Uh, please share with us actual details. Um, well, we have one week spring, so we release once a week. It helps us to deliver small features and fixes to the client in shorter terms. But if we have bigger features, we release them once in few sprints. Um, documentation of volunteer project is really essential, especially during the war. Team composition, composition is changing. Some people were volunteers only for a few weeks or months. 
So uh, now we use Excel files for uh, testing checklists because it's free and convenient. Um, more about tools. Um, we use GitLab because it's also free and useful for a voluntary project. To adapt it for QC needs, we use a label-based approach. So defects are added as issues with bug label, although priority is set with labels. So we receive from the club the minimum, and thanks to it, we have transparency and visibility of our processes and task progress. Um, what scrum ceremonies we have? Daily stand-ups with the whole team, uh, separate meeting Q QA team and accessibility team. I'll tell more uh, about it later. Planning on Mondays and newly implemented retrospective, the most important. Uh, also calls and demos for the client where we talk about new functionality and get approved. Um, team composition is classic. We have PM, uh, project manager, business analyst, DevOps, uh, developers team, front end and back end both. Uh, QC team and uh, even architect. Uh, our big achievement, well-described requirements. When it was about simple features, it was okay not described in detail. But when big one arrived, it becomes impossible without them. So we requested another business analyst. Uh, ha, uh, you are actually um, the lucky one. And in the IT holy wars, you can be on the slide side and uh, say, guys, a good requirement exists. This is not a legend. I work it on such project. And you are lucky that you could request business analyst when a team feels the need. Uh, I'm interested also in another practical aspects. Uh, how uh, do you track uh, who is available to take uh, the task and, and when it, uh, this task will be ready to manage scope completion, uh, release readiness, uh, and uh, etc. Uh, because task logistic is crucial in your circumstances. Um, when one starts working on a commercial project, uh, he or she continues to volunteer, except for the cases when there is a big workload on the main commercial project. So teammate informs about his or uh, her absence for a certain amount of time. So that we use load vacation plan so we can see how many team members are available for any day and for releases. And it's very helpful with planning all the activities. Uh, we piloted it for test team, and next step is to scale it for the whole team. Uh, and now it's quite relevant due to issues, issues with electricity. Mm, yeah, new reality and you, new wishes. May the power be with you and may forces be with us. Okay, uh, move on. Uh, go, no go. How does the team decide? Well, um, QC lead and business analysts decide go, no go, with factors to consider, MVP is working, no critical major bugs. The most critical thing is, is the possibility to donate. Uh, QC lead pay attention to the quality and business analysts to clients' priorities. Um, if we need to feature a sub because of business need, we release it and then plan hot fixes. Mm, different load uh, and availability of the team due to main commercial projects. Uh, uh, it sounds for me even worse than uh, working with different time zones. Uh, what do you release and deploy process look like? How do you survive, actually? Uh, first, uh, we analyze what is prioritized and uh, ready for release. Then we compile a list of tasks that have been retested and will go on. Um, we perform regression testing, depends on the scope and complexity of the functionality. Um, then testing on production and hot fixing. Um, I'm personally responsible for the donation system. We don't have schedules because we are dependent on developers load. So we have developers that are responsible for releases together with DevOps. And the QC team agrees on who will support the release because we need at least three people. 
this uh, volunteering project uh, gives you a chance to work with a variety of roles. And uh, one more direction is accessibility testing you mentioned um, previously. Uh, team of accessibility testers uh, was added to SOTSERV in 2020, and they are providing accessibility testing as a service. Uh, tell us about their cooperation. Well, accessibility team tests with screen readers that helps uh, that help users with visual impairment properly recognize and understand the content on a web page. It's really great that SoftServe has such a division, and it's great that they joined the Comeback Alive. It, it definitely makes the site more accessible both in Ukraine and also abroad. Uh, we collaborate closely and organize joint meetings to discuss the needs of each of the team, QCs and accessibility team. For this team, it's important that we talk uh, talk about new functionality and priorities beforehand and plan our work together. I have had no chance to work closely with accessibility team yet. Uh, what defects are they found and how they impact project? Um, okay, um, I can share some examples. Uh, some elements are not accessible using the keyboard. Uh, like unfocusable. Uh, some elements do not have screen reader names, such like button without label, um, although it can be poor color contrast. Uh, the link to the main content does not work, something like that. Uh, the team report box with additional accessibility label in GitLab. They are well described best or based on best practices. Sometimes accessibility box um, can even cause UX redesign. Hmm. Thank you. Uh, and as you said uh, earlier, a donation is in the center and any issue uh, which could block donation uh, requires immediate reaction. Uh, I have a pro uh, Provocative question. Uh, what was the most critical bug uh, linked to production? <laughs> yeah. yeah, issues with donation is the most critical, crucial, and whatever synonyms you know, you could put their thing. Um, actually, we had such issue uh, for like a few minutes and it was stressful, but fortunately, the team did it best. Uh, like lesson learned, and we hope it will not happen again. Fingers crossed it. <laughs> uh, you have some freedom, you have some limitations. Uh, your, um, let's uh, call it commercial experience, uh, mostly is working with American clients. Uh, my next question, uh, what is the difference to work with Ukrainian? Um, interesting fact, while I work with an American client, I never had overtime or late night releases. But now I have it uh, on this project because we have no schedule. What can I tell about working with Ukrainian clients? Um, you know, with the common goal we have now, cooperation is nice and effective. They really know what they want. Uh, we are working as one team with no barriers, neither verbal, because we talk on the same language nor mental, because we are really united by a common goal and purpose. Uh, but yeah, as usual, there are additional challenges uh, in working with clients who do not have software development experience, or this experience is limited, uh, like working with a single developer, not a team. Um, okay, more about challenges. The software development process uh, should have an estimation. From the customer side, there's a simply a deadline. For instance, uh, we need it in a week, but we all know the whole week might be needed for investigation or searching for a solution. Um, sometimes deadlines can't be feasible. So yeah, good software like wine takes time. Um, what else? Uh, in the first days of full-scale war, Applications MVPs were developed in one, two days. It's like incredible, which in my opinion also affect the perception of clients 
as how quickly software can be delivered. Uh, if I may uh, add here, it was the time when whole country put all efforts and started sprint, uh, but after we realized that it will be the marathon. And... Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, although uh, the client had a hard time accepting the rapid job rotation on the project, but we have currently closed this issue by stabilizing the team of those who want to volunteer regardless of the presence. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, please, please mute. We had no, thank you. Ira, please continue. Yes, uh, we have currently closed this issue by stabilizing the team of those who want to volunteer regardless of the presence of commercial projects as well as other circumstances. Um, we also received questions like, why developers team work on non-priority tasks while have deadlines for others, but available developer, developers specialize in certain technologies and areas. And this is one more specific thing of the volunteer project that we try to utilize available resources and expertise for another features as much efficient as we can. So um, as you see, the story backlog for volunteer project is very important because we have no fixed effective man hours a day. Uh, to sum up, uh, for uh, you personally, what does work on the Compact Alive project mean and how it affects you? Some insights maybe you have. Uh, I get the answer is in the name of the story, quality that leads us to freedom. Uh, first, um, for me, it's, it's completing the need to be useful during the war. Uh, with this clear and powerful purpose, I'm really happy to be a part of this project and realize that freedom is closer with every minute. Um, and the second one, the freedom to build a project that you want with a dream team, to experiment with the different approaches. Uh, I recommend participating in such projects. I, I really recommend like participating in such projects because you invest your time but receive a unique experience experience which sometimes you can't gain on commercial projects thank you and hope uh, this that this expertise new expertise and experience will help you in the future in commercial projects as well because you have a field to play let's saying in, in this uh, way. Uh, and from bottom of my heart, uh, uh, thanks a million to you, to team, to Open Tech for those inputs that uh, lead us to freedom. Uh, thank you, Ira. And uh, now it is a QA and a part. So let me check my chat and it is time actually start if you have any question to put them into the chat. And as I see, let me, let me check. Chat is empty without question. Guys, be active. If you have any, please put. And while our audience thinking, Ira, I have a question. How actually um, people could uh, join the Open Tech or your project, for example, what they need to do? Um. Actually, we have only one limitation, and it's the possibility. Um, this this possibility op uh, is open for software associates due to security aspects. So, <laughs> only uh, one. Okay, uh, who are interested? Uh, you could just open Open Tech uh, uh, site and. Uh, going through the menu and actually I put this into into the chat and to found like be, be a volunteer and after that select a project or just put the application uh, for the uh, let's say Okay, we have a question. Andrei uh, Manuk asked it, do you have any interesting feature in uh, future sprints? Something, something interesting 
you're going uh, to release yes yes um we have new project so like in our plans like new projects to launch and uh, the purpose of this new project uh, is to gain more money to gather more money for donations so because like Kamba Collect foundation try to cooperate with uh, like different organizations so as you heard before like uh, guest stain, uh, guest um, uh, station chain like oco like with students so it will be something like that also uh, we like redesign uh, our um, reporting so you can see more like you 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 will have um more visibility about donations yeah so that that's about new things uh thanks and we have a comment thank you guys for your hard work for our victory and the next question how much time per week do you usually spend working on a volunteer project um, I think it depends, uh, and it depends um, on or how um, um, how complicated features we like we have like this week, and also it depends on availability of other team members. So if like everyone is available, so it can be one hour a day, it can be like two, three, four hour a day. But sometimes if it's complicated feature and we have release, we have uh, like regression tested, it can be uh, like even more than four, four hours a day. As far as I understand, it uh, depends on the project lot and some time of, on a project need on uh, actually when you need and people decide where they work actually not only eight hours plus two, but maybe eight hours plus six more sometimes. Yeah. Yes. Um, first, uh, the next one. First of all, thanks for the presentation. And there is a question uh, regarding specifics for leading volunteer project compare with corporate billable projects. Could you briefly list at least two, three not obvious uh, uh, differences, I believe, yeah? Um, yeah, um, I think, um, you, you know, like, <laughs> uh, I think you, you will get like, you can see it in like this presentation when you like, uh, see these records, uh, again, because I talked about this, um, but like to see, to tell about this more like in short, short, um, shortly. So I can say, um, we have no schedule. We have no uh, possibilities to plan our load because we depend on uh, developers' load and their load on their commercial project. Although um, it's about like dream team, so because like when you are on volunteer project, you can organize team with people that uh, like you have like I don't know like same values, same point of views, and it's easier than on the commercial billable projects when you need to build uh, the team like from the scratch. So I think like the two, like the two, it, it's the uh, two biggest um, differences. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The next uh, uh, from Vasil uh, Romanko. Have you worked with sensitive confidential information uh, related to AMI uh, and all on this project? And did you need to sign some NDAs? Um, I, um, what can I say? Um, there we have sensitive data, but I can't tell you more. <laughs> about about the thing so but yeah we have i only can say that we have sensitive data Mm, the next one, we have a comment. Uh, thank you very much. We all believe in our victory and you are working to make our victory closer. Thank you, Svetlana. Ira Chibanyak ask, uh, ask it, uh, did uh, you do perf uh, performance testing? Did you face any performance issue in uh, production? 
Um, actually, we uh, have performance issues right now, and we are dealing with them right now. So fingers crossed that everything will be like better in this area. Mm -hmm. Yes, we still have a time for questions, so put them into the chat if you have any. And meanwhile, we are waiting. Uh, I would like to announce our next evening event at 5 uh, uh, p.m. EST time. My colleague, Jana Kanibolotska, is presenting topic, You are software tester, what's next? It is an uh, external uh, event, so you are all welcome to join this event.